Okay, so let's jump into this video and talk about doing our tuning process with a mass airflow sensor. We're going to find this is going to be extremely simple to dial a vehicle in compared to speed density or volumetric efficiency. So we'll find those have a three-dimensional table. The mass airflow sensor is going to be a simple two-dimensional lookup table. Now, before we get started with talking about the different calibration techniques working with the mass airflow sensors, let's talk about the sensors themselves and how it's going to function in the actual fuel calculations. We'll find we're going to be working with two primary sensor types. There's going to be a zero to five volt type and a frequency based type. So depending on what manufacturer you're going to be working with, they're going to be sourcing different sensor types. Now, regardless if it's a voltage type or a frequency type, it's going to be registering the amount of airflow coming over the sensor. It's going to be sending out a voltage signal or a frequency signal back to the computer. It's then going to take that signal. It's going to be looking up in a two dimensional table what that particular air mass is coming in the engine. Now, we've talked about this equation of fuel mass is equal to air mass divided by our target air fuel several times already in our EFI advanced training course here. It's going to be using that same equation. So if we know the air mass that we're measuring and we know what the target air fuel is going to be at idle and part throttle on an OMECU, it's going to be 14.7 to 1 or stoichiometric. It's going to know what the fuel mass is. Now we would establish what the injector flow rate, the injector data is going to be doing. So the injector dead time or offset values and the short, short pulse width adder tables. It'll be converting the fuel mass into an injector pulse width. That's going to therefore fuel the engine and hit the target air fuel that we want. In a perfect world, this would just go about in an open loop situation. We wouldn't have any kind of interference and it would simply hit the air fuel that we would be requesting at all times. Now, the problem's going to be, it's not going to be in a perfect world. There's always going to be variables that we can't account for. That's where the closed loop operation is going to come in. We've talked about that as well, where the O2 sensor is going to be using a short and long-term fuel trim to try to get the fuel mixture back in line. We're going to find that's going to apply here with a mass airflow sensor car as well. We're going to look at using that for our tuning technique here in a little bit in the video, but I just wanted to establish how this is going to work. Now, before we go into anything else, let's just quickly take a look at some different examples we have here and some different types of ECUs. So looking into a Subaru ECU, we're going to find that we have our calibration curve and it's going to be a mass airflow cal uh, two-dimensional calibration curve. It's going to be based on voltage. So in this particular calibration curve, it'll have a voltage and it'll have a value that's going to be an air mass in grams per second. So depending on what kind of system you're working with, you might be referencing grams per second, you might be referencing pound per hour or pound per minute. There's gonna be the more common units of associating your air mass or the flow coming into the engine. Now we're also in the Subaru ECU going to have a target air fuel table. So this table is gonna be specifying, depending on the load and the RPM we're at, what we want the air fuel to be. So if we know the fuel mass, we know the air mass, and we know the actual uh, target air fuel, therefore we would know the fuel mass. Now we're gonna be also specifying some other details in this section right here, it's going to be the injector flow rate, the injector dead time information or offset information, uh, the minimum pulse width, and some of these ECUs have a short pulse width adder depending on which one you're talking about. Uh, you'll find that it's going to convert that fuel mass into an actual uh, injector pulse width and then deliver the air fuel requesting. So pretty simple system. If we're taking a look at a, a GM ECU, so it's going to be a frequency, ba frequency based mass airflow sensor, we're going to look at the table, it's going to be a relatively large table. Um, it'll have a certain amount of frequency in hertz, and then it'll have an associated air mass value, whether it's going to be grams per second, pound per hour, pound per minute. And then we'll be taking that value. It'll be taking a look at what we want our stoichiometric air fuel to be at, and then it'll convert it into a fuel mass because we know, again, air mass, target air fuel, it'll be then giving us um, that, that amount. And then we'll have all of our injector data. So the injector flow rate, Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.